Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. Today's game is a fresh one we just played the other day, and boy was it a cool game, although there was way too many Gilded Drakes for my liking. Also, if you're interested in playing with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community and would love to talk MTG or whatever strikes our fantasy. And another benefit is we often let people know when we play and would love to meet some new people. Alright, block there, kill that, oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting us off, we have MTG Loots. Who brought Winota? This is an explosive stacks combo deck that wants to play non-human creatures early and then play its commander. Using Winota's ability to cheat creatures into play at an alarming rate and overwhelm the board. The explosive nature of the deck in combination with Tightly layered combos allow for the first real opportunity for Boros to play at the competitive tables. Next, we have Hidden back on one of his favorite comfort decks, Riel the Everwise. This is an Is It Discard Matters deck that uses Riel's ability to net positive on cards such as Faithless Looting, to dig deep, and assemble an Underworld Breach combo. But if this deck looks interesting, we already did a deck tech video on it. Cough, cough, link in the corner. In the third spot, we have Fernando, piloting the Agila. This is a five color Thassa's consultation list that backdoors into an infinite creatures combats combo with Najila, who even if just left alone can amass a horde of warriors to take their opponents out. And bringing up the rear, we have Jimmy. And today, oh boy, did he bring a spicy new list. And while the commander is Kenrith, this is actually a five color Zozu the Punisher list. It's a stack deck that not only looks to tax the board, but also, more importantly, his opponent's life total. It uses cards such as mana barbs to punish his opponent's casting spells, while relying on Kenrith's seemingly unused white ability to gain life and break parity. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Loot starts off the game with a mountain and plays a Hope of Girapur. Hidden has an island and plays an inactive Mox Amber before handing it over to Fernando. Fernando plays a tropical island and enchants it with Utopia Sprawl. Jimmy also has a trop and goes for the classic Green Sun Zenith where X equals zero to find a Dryad Arbor. Lutz has a clifftop retreat and taps out for a Boar Signet. The Hope is then turned sideways and heads at Fernando for one. Hidden plays a mount in his land and taps his basic to cast a Jace, Vryn's Prodigy. And no surprises here, as Fernando plays an exotic orchard and casts his commander Najila. Jimmy has an island, and it turns out this is really just a five color Simic deck. I'm playing sick Simic today. Arbor Elf. Hell yeah. Two color uh, Kenrith. Yep, two color Kenrith. <laughs> Jimmy then finishes his turn casting a Soul Ring. Lutz plays a Plains and, also unsurprisingly, taps out for Winota. She resolves, with Lutz then heading to combat and swinging the hope at Hidden. This triggers Winota, and Lutz reveals a Grand Abolisher, which goes at Fernando. Both players take the hit, and Lutz is done after that. Hidden has a Wooded Foothills as land, and then casts his commander, Riel. He also resolves, with Hidden following it up by cracking his foothills for a Volcanic, and passes leaving his Jace active. Fernando plays a Bloodstained Mire and kicks it off with combat. He sends the Gila at Jimmy, with the additional warrior also going at the same target. Jimmy then double blocks the Gila, and before damage, Fernando Fatal pushes the Arbor Elf. Jimmy uses the Elf to untap his Tropical Island, and with the push still on the stack, he encounters it with a Swan Song. The push is then countered, with Fernando getting a bird and damage happens with everything trading, with Jimmy taking one off the unblocked warrior. On his second main, Fernando casts a Gilded Drake to take Hidden's Riel. But before the swap happens, Hidden taps his Jace to draw and discard, triggering Riel to draw an additional card with the swap happening after that. Jimmy plays a Spire Guard in his land and casts a Cinder Vines. He then follows it up with the Training Grounds. Lutz has a Throne of the High City as Lan, and has the combat. The Abolisher and Hope go at Jimmy, with the Winota heading at Fernando. 
This gives him another Winota trigger, and he ends up revealing a Magus of the Moon, attacking Jimmy. Note, this does cause Fernando's Utopia Sprawl to fall off. Players then head to blocks, with Fernando chumping Winota with his Warrior, and Jimmy taking the hit. On his second main, Lutz casts a Dranith Magistrate, and finishes his turn casting a Thalia, Heretic Cathar. Luckily, Hinden has another basic island. He then casts his own Gilded Drake, taking back his Riel. He then takes immediate advantage and taps his Jace to loot. This draws him an additional card from Riel, but he ends up just wanting to leave his mana untapped and hands it over to Fernando. Fernando has a tap Scrub Mountain, but with the Blood Moon out, doesn't have much else. Jimmy has a Training Mountain in his land and casts a Citadel of Pain. Hidden responds to this with a frantic search and takes one off the Cinder Vines. He then draws two, discards two, and untaps three lands, additionally drawing two more off Riel. Hidden did think the Citadel pings players every turn, not just their end step, so he continues to respond as he delves cards away to cast a dig through time. He takes another from the Cinder Vines and then finds two cards from the top seven. The Citadel resolves, and Jimmy hands it over to Lutz. I feel like we're going to lose to, to Rick just because we can't stop Winota. Yup. Combat is all Lutz needs as he then turns his board sideways at Jimmy. He gets one Winota trigger and finds a Zealous Conscripts, which heads at Jimmy as well. On ETB, the Conscripts does take Hidden's Gilded Drake, and then Jimmy takes the hit. On his second main phase, Luz decides to lay his cards on the table, literally, as he casts a Kiki Jiki. And while unfortunately he already did go through combat, he does tap the Kiki to copy the stolen Drake, to take Riel. It's officially go time now, as the table needs to find an answer to the Kiki combo. It then starts off with a Mana Crypt, taking one off the Cinder Vines. He then follows it up with another rock, this one being a Mox Diamond. He takes another one and discards a Lonely Sandbar. He goes digging as he casts a Careful Study, taking another damage. He still doesn't like what he sees and loots with Jace, which is finally enough cards to transform Jace. Unfortunately, the Dranith does prevent him from flashing anything back, so instead he pluses him to give Winota minus 2, minus 0. He still unfortunately doesn't find an answer and makes a deal with the table stop the Blood Moon in hopes they can find something instead. So he takes one to hard cast a Submerge and puts the Magus on top of Lutz's library. He had to hard cast it due to the Blood Moon making everything a mountain, but this allows Fernando to crack his fetch for an underground sea on his end step. Fernando doesn't have an answer in hand, but he is the next best thing as he casts a Demonic Tutor. He takes one from the Vine and searches out a card. He then casts a Phantasmal Image, which copies his Gilded Drake to take Kiki, and put an end to Lutz's combo. Jimmy untaps and plays a Tap Temple Garden. Oh lord, that is something. Uh, sorry Rick. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Six mana, you're wiping the board. Chandra Awakened Inferno. Jimmy then minuses Chandra and wipes the board of everything except the Winota. Lutz draws his Magus, but doesn't like what he sees. He moves to combat, but is not sure which walker he should swing at. Chandra, if left alive, can board wipe, but Jace can give a lot of value. Ultimately, he decides the board wipe potential is too strong. Chandra does survive due to Winota being weakened by the Jace. And on his second main, Lutz finishes his turn recasting his Magus of the Moon. But at his end step, Hidden flashes in a dress down to draw a card and lose a life. Hidden untaps and plays and cracks a Flooded Strand for an island. Hidden has a handful of lands, so he's forced to downtick Jace to flashback his dick through time and hopefully look for some gas. He takes one off the Cindervan and boy does he find the gas he needs as he selects his two cards and then slams down an Underworld Breach. He takes another one and then recasts his discarded Lion's Eye Diamond. At this point, we realize he still needs to roll for the Crypt, but luckily for him, it doesn't deal any damage this turn. He then shows the table a Brain Freeze, and the table decides to scoop it up, because even though the Cinder Vines is hurting him, he is enough of a life total to mill himself out 
and find an answer to it, and then mill his opponents out or win with his other Jace. Game review. Well damn, Winota is another powerful commander. Unfortunately for the table, no one was able to deal with her, and oh boy did she start to steamroll. The only misplay was on Lutz's part. He forgot that the Kiki copies go away at his end step, or he would have held on to the Kiki in hand. The other thing I would have done was use the hope to silence Jimmy. Even though he didn't know about the Chandra, Lutz had the win in hand, and stopping at least one player from being able to interact on his turn would have been a real step forward to him actually taking home the game. But as for the other players, it was unfortunate for Jimmy and Fernando that the Magus came out and really put a strain on their mana bases. But hey, that's what you get when you play five colors. And as for Hidden, it was really fortunate that Dig Through Time gave him what he needed, as he was holding two lands and a mana rock, and wouldn't have been able to do much else. But question for the viewers, would you have done anything differently this game? Other than not play the Kiki when Lutz did? Let me know in the comments down below. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I just wanted to let you know that we have a TCG affiliate link. And if you ever see a card you want to try or are inspired to brew something new, use our link when purchasing and we'll receive a small portion of the sale. This is a great way to support the channel. And if you enjoyed the gameplay, please leave a like and subscribe as it really helps us keep making videos. And remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.